Hello! Hello, Karen. How are you, lovely? I'm wonderful. How are you? I am mm, good. Good lovely, to see you. Lovely to see you. Welcome to Chiswick House. I thank you for bringing me here. It is where I normally spend my weekends walking Bob Marley, my dog. You're going to show me around? Absolutely. Let's go. Let's do it. Lovely to see you. And you? Yeah, it's been a while. It has? Yeah. But obviously you've got quite a lot on your plate at the moment. Just a bit. Yeah, so you've got the yeah. WPP gig, obviously a brand new charity. Yeah. So how do you keep it all going? I love a challenge, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the, the yeah. core job, the WPP yeah. job, huge yeah. role, the biggest communications group in the, in the UK. Um, at a time when there's a lot going on in the advertising mm. space. You know, on the one hand, you've got the, the seventh advertising pays report, which is talking about how uh, advertising is powering so much of the UK economy. Yeah. On, the, on the other side, you've got massive issues with, with trust. Yeah, people are trying to trust each other more mm -hmm. than they do any form of organisation or institution. And actually, that's a huge opportunity for brands if they can get it right. Yeah. It really is. Part of the reason why I became more involved with government is not for any ambition about wanting to go into politics at all. It's about making sure that our industry and the wider creative industry is recognised for how much we contribute to mm. GVA. And we do. Part of the reason why I talk a lot and get involved with government is to make sure that we get what we need to grow as an industry. But also as an industry, we do have to hold ourselves responsible. Mm. Not only can we help grow businesses mm -hmm. and grow our clients' brands and create brands, but we've got a huge responsibility, especially now more so than ever, to make people feel as though they belong. Making sure that we truly reflect modern Britain in the stories that we are telling mm -hmm. is a way of making people feel they belong and bringing them in and eliciting that trust. And look, you've got to make sure that you've got a product or a service or a brand which is credible and reliable. But the empathy and self-orientation, I think we've not done enough of mm -hmm. in our industry. Yeah. And that's what helps build trust. We're working with clients primarily, mm. who are at the forefront of this, trying to understand how to engage with consumers. Mm. And when you have conversations with CMOs, what are the things that they're asking you most for? And how, how, they ask, how, how is the help they're asking you for changing over time? One of the things that I did in my role at WPP is form a client council mm. to try and make sure that I know what growth looks like for them mm -hmm. in the next five years. Mm -hmm what are the barriers to getting there, and then what do I need to develop at WPP to help them overcome those barriers and help them deliver growth. And it's been really interesting in terms of the commonalities mm -hmm. and, you know, 75% of our revenue at WPP is in the comms bucket. Yep. And that's where we absolutely is our heartland and where creativity is at the core. But so many of the questions that are being asked are about the other three strategic pillars, which is part of our strategy, our three-year turnaround strategy. How do you have that direct relationship with the consumer? Mm -hmm. So commerce is yep. incredibly important. What's the customer experience like? And that's so interesting. And how do you make the experience better? Yep. And whether that experience is the physical store or it's an app or it's something else, we need to work on that. I know, on that point, I mean, and there are still so many big brands where their mobile experience is just massively subpar. Mm. It might be because it's too slow, mm -hmm. it might be because it's just very difficult to work out exactly what you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. like, you know, just the, the navigation is difficult. If, if that's the first experience that a consumer has of your brand, that's it. That's you, exactly you, right. They're you check off. out. They've gone. Totally agree. Um, and, and I think, you know, the, this, this kind of omni-channel presence that brands, some, many brands do have, and how that becomes a seamless experience across, yeah. across the board is, is probably the most important thing that brands can actually get right now. Totally agree, but it shouldn't be at the detriment to the physical store, though, because no. I still believe that that physical location, you just need to understand the user experience yep. and what you can use that physical store for. Yep. And then there's the marketing technology. So again, in our client councils, making sure that they've got a single view of a customer yep. is such a big thing. And Again, in terms of how some of our clients' organisations are siloed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's still some organisations that have the offline team and the online team, and the, the customer journey seems to fall down in between the two. And we have to understand, we really have to really interrogate and understand that customer journey. Yep. And look, and part of it's about working with people like Google to try and come up with, right, how do we navigate that? How do we overcome that barrier or that hurdle? Yep. To try and make sure that our customers don't check out.
Where do you think creativity plays a role here? Because I, I you know, I think in, in from, from my perspective, you know, UK has always been seen as the forefront of at the forefront of creativity. Mm. I think we've done some of the best creative work. Um, in advertising and outside of advertising uh, that we've seen anywhere globally. In, in some areas of digital, it probably mm. hasn't come through quite mm. as well. Mm -hmm. where, do you, where do you stand on creativity? Look, it is the fuel for absolutely making sure that brands grow and sing. It is the fuel. It's, a, it's no wonder that so many consultants are trying to buy in creativity. Mm. And the other thing that we have is implementation and execution as well. So there's brilliant strategies and theories, but you've got to be on the ground because things don't always go according to plan. Things evolve, events happen, and that brilliant creative idea somehow doesn't go according to plan. Yep. And then you need to know how to switch and yep. how to execute. And I think that's where agencies, in my view, have the upper hand on management consultants. We've started to think about different formats which are leading to different types of creativity. So I'm thinking of things like, you know, the trivia format, which you can skip. I'm thinking about the six second uh, bumper ad on a mobile phone, because, you know, that's how consumers actually want to engage with advertising. It's completely different to what you'd mm. see on TV. And how are you thinking about that in your business? Look, I think it's absolutely key that we follow how, you know, developments and technology can change consumer behaviour mm. and what that means in terms of impact and attention trying to get a brand story across. Mm. It's an exciting time and it's a really dynamic time and, you know, it's... There's no right or wrong at the moment. So, yeah, just, just thinking about what we were talking about earlier, you've been at the forefront, I think, of lots of diversity and inclusion ideas and initiatives. Is it, is it making a difference in your business? Do you know what? I just get so tired of diversity being seen as a problem to fix. For me, if any company wants to grow, you've got to represent modern Britain. You really have. And yeah. that's all of the voices, no matter what their background, of modern Britain. And our industry is not inclusive. It's not. And one in 14 is the number of people that have gone to privately educated schools. Yeah. And in our industry, it's one in three at senior management level. Me. You know, we've got less than 8% of our industry that uh, comes from an ethnic background being female and 36% in terms of in senior positions. So yeah. we've got work to do, and that's not for altruistic reasons. It's just about, it's business sense. Yep. It's not an issue, it is the solution. It mm -hmm. really is to make sure that you future-proof your business. So on the social mobility bit, and I'd, I'd put demographics in there as well. Yeah. I think, you know, the industry working is far too London-centred. Mm. And, like, you know, I, I know that certainly a lot of your opcos have done quite a lot of work in reaching out to those communities. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about that and, and how we could, perhaps as an industry, yeah. do a lot more. Just how we do that says mm. a lot. So we invite people in. Mm. Does anyone even have... the faintest idea what it's like if you are a young mixed race black uh, you know lower social class walking into some of the buildings that they have to has anybody got any hell. idea what that's like but that's what we do we invite people in yeah and we think that that's going to help it's actually do you know what we, it's got to be outreach we've got to go to them mm -hmm. we've got to go in their environment we've got to make sure that they feel comfortable with us mm -hmm. we've got to set up and create relationships, which then means that they can come in and experience our environments and experience what we do. It still surprises me that we think that all of the talent resides in the 7% of people who went to private school. Mm. We've actually been working on something. The idea was that we wanted to find 50 people who came from different backgrounds yeah. uh, who were struggling to get into the into the industry, into yeah. the advertising, marketing, yeah. and creative industries. And we set them up on a bunch of, I mean, mentoring, but to be honest, kind of reverse mentoring yeah. as well, which was yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Everybody got snapped up. They're all looking at fantastic opportunities now. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. That's, that's a brilliant starting point for us to do that for the industry. How do we make it, how do, how do we make it bigger? Absolutely, and it's literally getting more people involved because the fact that you recognise that rather than waiting for people to come to you mm. and using experts and role models to go out and find them yep. and you working with them and going to them is mm. brilliant and look we have to advertise advertising i do think we're yes. a bit complacent that we think that people want to get into our industry we do need to do more and it's brilliant initiatives like that and it's more organizations working together i mean the industry diversity task force is a collection of 26 agencies yep. from totally different holding companies and brilliant media owner partners that are trying to work together to 
help grow our industry and change our industry, and we have to do more like that. So uh, I actually um, did a little bit of research before I came. This particular area where we are now is where the Beatles filmed Paperback Writer. And that was 1966, and it's gone down in history as the first ever music video. There you go. Right here. Always so you, an education. So if you watch that video on YouTube, you'll see these statues, which probably look exactly the same as they did in 1966, because it looks like they've been here for quite some time. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs>